In Matthew 8, 20, we read, Foxes have no holes, Jesus says, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Now, Jesus had no home. His entire life from birth to death was a life of wandering. When he called men to follow him, they better get ready to walk. They better put their shoes on. Because when you follow Jesus, you are going to walk. Christ demanded that his followers abandon their settled lives to follow him and walk. At last, at last, we see the one bearing the curse of Cain, Jesus Christ, accepting the curse of Cain to wander the earth. But he, unlike Cain, will not run to the city in search of security, but he will trust in the mark that God has placed upon him to keep him safe. And he wanders. Why does he wander? Cain wanted nothing to do with his sentence. Cain wanted nothing to do with the wandering. Instead, he revolted and built a city. But Jesus did not. Jesus wandered because he took on the full condition of man. Jesus had no home. He was a man. Oh, I hope you're hearing me. Jesus Christ took on the full condition of man that we, you and I, still oftentimes reject. We cannot believe that we are alone. We surround ourselves with the city. We think somehow it, we have created a security to protect ourselves. But we are no more safer now than we are outside of the city. In fact, the city is more dangerous. The cities themselves will fall, the Bible says. The security that man has placed in his cities will crumble. Jesus wandered the earth without a home because he was fully man. Because man has no home on this earth. We are pilgrims. We are sojourners. We are wayfarers. We are looking for that city whose builder and maker is God. We cannot find it here. We refuse to kill for kingdoms here. We refuse to bow to the kingdoms here. We have a kingdom of God that is beyond this. Jesus did not follow in the way of Cain. He experienced the fullness of isolation. Jesus experienced what it felt like to really be isolated. He experienced the fullness of the intimacy with nature. He would go to the mountain and pray and be by himself in isolation. He would wander. He was a man. Jesus builds no city. He builds no bunker. He does not settle down in one place. For to do so would, for, would be for Jesus to accept Satan's propositions. Unlike Cain, Christ trusted in the Father's protection amid his sentence of wandering. Jesus took on the wandering aspect of Cain's judgment and he became fully man. Jesus didn't live in denial about what being a man was about. And then he told us to follow him. Now, friend, you have, as I close out now, you have a whole world around you. You were birthed into this world. And it's like a womb almost. As soon as you come into it, it's like a womb, this world. It surrounds you with trappings. It encourages you that you're okay. Just do what everybody else does and everything will be just fine, they say. Oh, don't question these things. We aren't allowed to question these things. And don't question these things. We aren't allowed to question these things. But everything's okay. And yet the same Bible tells us that God will judge all these things. That all the cities will fall. That all the kingdoms that are currently not gods will become gods. In the book of Revelation chapter 11, the Bible tells us that the kingdoms of this, God, of, of the kingdoms of this world 
have now become the kingdoms of our God. Who controls the kingdoms today? The Bible tells us that it's Satan. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, that Satan is the God of this world. Paul tells us that this is a present evil age. When is this present evil age? Pre-Christ? No. After Christ dies, resurrects, and ascends. It's still a present evil age. Satan is still the prince of the power of the air. Well, the, the whole world, the Bible says in 1 John, the whole world lies in the power of the wicked one. So we do not have any vested interest in this world because this world belongs to the power of the wicked one. Christ understood this. Paul understood this. Peter understood this. Now let's try to get some 21st century Christians to understand this. Let's not settle for this world's kingdoms. Jesus didn't. You don't have to either. You don't have to settle for this. This isn't your home. 